So today we're doing a super detailed walk around of the MR2. And let me tell you, I have done zero prep for this video. I want to show you the car honestly. I want to show it to you the way it really is. I didn't wash it. I didn't remove random stuff from the interior. I didn't do anything. I just took it out of the garage the way it is and the way I use it 99% of the time. We're going to see the good stuff. We're going to see the bad stuff. We're going to see everything. So without any further ado, let's do a... walk around of the MR2. I feel kind of like Chris Fix with my hands right in front of the camera. You know, speaking go energetically, yada yada yada. Uh, so yeah, let's start with the obvious thing. Let's start with the exterior and what you have in the exterior is your typical red Mark 1B MR2. Mark 1B means it's the facelift, so it's the facelift. And uh, what it doesn't have, what most Mark 1Bs have uh, around the world is the side skirts. As you can see, I don't have side skirts. And most of the MR2s you see, you know, online have them because most of those pictures are from the United States and this one is in Europe. And in Europe, many of these uh, that's my shadow. Yo, shadow! Uh, many of these in Europe simply don't have the side skirts. If we move in closer, you can see. Uh, go away, shadow. If we move in closer, you can see that I have a lot of road rash right there on the side skirts. Underneath that uh, isn't just bodywork. Underneath that, I put a thick layer of black uh, rubber coating, which sort of prevents, you know, the road rash from, you know, getting right into your bodywork and rusting everything out. It's been doing a decent job so far, and as you can see here. Uh, more road rash and also as you can see my MR2 is dirty and my MR2 is dirty almost always I really n I'm not the type of guy to often wash my car and you know try to make it look beautiful most of the time most of the time my, my car is dirty as you can see on the windscreen I don't know if you can see that dirty dirty right there everything is dirty it's got a million scratches and yeah, the, the goal, the only goal I built this car for is for it actually to be a driving machine. Uh, for me to be able to enjoy twisting mountain roads in it, to attack the cor you know, to attack the corners in it, and basically to put a smile on my face with this car. And so far, this summer, it has accomplished that mission with great success, and I'm very, very grateful to this car for that. It really did deserve that kiss because it's a good car and I seriously love it. Driving it hard in the mountains is, is, is pure, pure, pure joy. And don't let people convince you it's, you know, twitchy and snappy and whatever. It's probably theirs isn't probably in good condition and that's why I think it sucks when it's done right. This car is a true joy to drive. So continuing on with the exterior, these are my wheels. Uh, these are Intra Gutmann. Intra is a German wheel company. These are actually very period correct because these are wheels from 1987, the same year from which this car uh, is. Uh, they are relatively lightweight. I would like them to be lighter, uh, but they're old, so they're not, but they're good. Uh, they look nice. I like these wheels that have, you know, these sort of things on the edge. My wheel nuts, I'm ashamed to admit, my lug nuts are absolutely horrible $16 lug nuts from eBay that I simply didn't get the time to replace. They were, they were supposed to be a test fit just to have something to get the car registered and road legal but I actually kept them on and I'll be honest they've been working pretty great. I've been driving the car very very hard almost all the time and I had zero issues with these. I will probably replace them with something more serious but for $16 amazing. My tires are Toyo uh, T1R proxies uh, in the measurement of 195, 50, uh, a 15 inch 
tire on a 15 inch wheel so something pretty standard i went for this size because it works well and it's easy to get and you have a good selection of tires when it comes to the toyo t1r honestly i have been very very impressed and amazing tire that worked real well for me so far i don't drive much this is a weekend car not my daily so this tire is amazing for that uh, both in dry in the wet it's not perfect but it's pretty good in the wet in dry it's just glorious and you can enjoy the car truly this white tire lettering that you can see was a horrid attempt by myself to try and make some white tire lettering i gave up after the paint started drooping down and looking horrible and i simply do not have the patience and nerves you know to do this one millimeter by millimeter microscopic precision so it looks good so i just stopped at toy which this watch which is what this car is it's my favorite toy ever big toys for big boys i used to have little cars when i was a kid now i have this big car so it kind of makes sense i just left it there uh more dirtiness uh probably somewhere from a mountain there was a puddle or something more road rash uh, as I said this actually isn't road rash this bit here is but this the rubber coating is good at protecting the car from rust but uh, paint isn't really good at sticking to it I tried a few times to repaint this but paint doesn't just want to stick to this for some reason and uh, eventually I just gave up gave up you know and I don't really care I just want the car to be you know the bodywork to be solid and not rust out and if it looks like this I don't care I just want this to be drivable for as long as absolutely possible moving on to the back this is my license plate you don't care about that uh, just just something I want to say is I despise European license plates this is European standard I'm in Europe in a tiny little country called Bosnia and Herzegovina this are my license plate now you can you know look up the car whatever it's probably completely useless uh, these are giant European license plates are giant and stupid and horrible and they ruin the look of the car especially let's just move quickly to the front look at that in the front go away shadow look at that this is horrible this is killing the look of the car the license plate is giant and the car is small and my plan for the winter is actually to relocate the license plate from there to there to the side to open you know more airflow right there to the radiator and simply to make the car look nicer i tried getting a custom license plate a smaller one unfortunately that is no longer possible anywhere in europe it's 100 illegal and you have you have to have this standardized format license plate the size of a house it's horrible now let's let's go back to the back in the back i'm actually missing all those pretty twin cam 16 valve toyota mr2 everything stickers the previous owner removed them and i uh it wasn't high on my priority list to put these on so there's no stickers and as you can see uh, my tail lights have been blacked out they have been smoked i absolutely hate this this is actually bad for safety it, it makes the car makes the car look cheap and you know horrible and disgusting you know, like it's driven by some ricer or whatever very very ugly so another thing that i'm going to put on the winter checklist to do over this winter is that i'm going to remove this tinting from these uh, tail lights i'm gonna make them look stock because then all the lights are better visible the chances of somebody hitting you uh, is dec are decreased and it just looks it just looks a lot nicer and another thing on the winter ch winter checklist is i'm gonna get the stickers uh, we have the wing this is a standard wing some people remove them people like some people like the windows look i don't i think the wing is very important to the look of the mr2 and it really really completes it that's just personal taste people can do whatever they want but this wing is very 80s very jet fighter very beautiful uh moving on since we're in the back let's talk a little bit about my exhaust i'm gonna get down i'm gonna get dirty <laughs> this is my exhaust uh yeah and this is actually uh, a volkswagen exhaust it's a uh, a chambered exhaust that goes onto some Volkswagen Golfs Mark III's, I believe, some old caddies, maybe even on some vans as one of the as one of the uh, mufflers. 
so yeah this is my exhaust muffler uh, Volkswagen it sounds actually nice from the from the outside when the car passes by it sounds kind of kind of cool it has a relatively nice sound <laughs> But from the inside, inside the car, the car is still, uh, I, I, I complained about this in about uh, probably a million videos, uh, said this, that I'm going to replace it, I'm going to replace it, but I never did replace it, it just stays there because it works. But as I said, on the inside, I do not like this exhaust, it's way, way, way too loud. Uh, and especially at low RPMs, it's okay. Mid RPM also okay. But when you get into the high RPM, six and seven thousand RPM, everything goes boomy. And I'm not blaming the exhaust alone, the muffler alone. That's not the only problem. The problem is that the exhaust itself, as being a mid-engine car, is simply very short. There isn't a lot of exhaust there, just a bit of pipe and a muffler and this exit pipe and that's it. That's part of the problem. And problem number two is that I do intend to insulate the interior a bit, the rear firewall to get some of this boominess out because it is a bit annoying. I don't mind it too much, but after some time I, I kind of started disliking it. Uh, later on I'm also gonna drive the car on some ramps and show you the underbody. I'm gonna show you all the details about suspension, but for now we're gonna move on to the interior. Here's a ni nice shot of the Toyo T1R. There's still, there's a lot of tread left on these. They'll probably be good for another year. I don't drive that much usually, you know, when I catch some time. So now moving on to the interior. This, wait for it, wait for it. There's a sound that's gonna happen now. We have to wait for the truck to go away. Go away, truck. And now, this. So there's something wrong with my hinges. I'm pretty certain, pretty certain, wow. I'm pretty certain that it's something that has to do with this little pin right here that I should replace that's gonna lift the doors up or something, I don't know. Another thing on the winter checklist, which will probably by the end of this video uh, will be very long. So yeah, that's annoying with the doors. Uh, other than that, everything else is stock. The doors haven't been messed with. This is of course a bit loose because this is a, see, ancient car. But honestly, as I said, driving machine, I don't care. Driving machine, I don't care. As long as it drives, I don't care. I just wanna drive this thing fast and enjoy it in the corners, that's pretty much it. Going deeper into the interior, here we have my steering wheel. This is a Momo Corse. This was supposed to be another test fit. I bought it locally for like 20 bucks. It's all cracked up and not in a good condition. The horn is always upside down because if I turn it right side up, oh, it works. Good, I'm gonna keep it like this, but it somehow always ends up upside down. It's a knockoff from eBay, $2. I don't really care about whether something is original or not. You know, when it comes to steering wheel buttons, as long as it works, I'm cool with it. You know, uh, what I care about is, you know, when stuff is original is bolts and springs and oil filters and, you know, important mechanical parts for the car's performance and safety. Who cares about this? So two bucks, got the job done. Okay, here we have everything is of course stock except my awesome unique uh, speed hot tachometer. Some people don't like this, they think it's kind of ricey. Uh, I don't care, I love it uh, because it has my logo on it, it's mine. There's just one like this in the entire world and I love it. I love the way it works, the way it's smooth, the way it's cool. Let me just show you how cool it is. Uh, that's my fuel pump. See? Then it comes on and look at it. It's beautifully smooth. Look at that. I just love it. At night it goes beautifully red. It's awesome and it's not coming off. I I actually had it installed in the beginning because I thought I couldn't get the stock ignition coil which has the signal for the stock to come over to work. I eventually figured out how to get that working but then I decided that this is core cool and I kept it. Something uh, you guys over in the US don't have is this. 
it's the economy light. This is the stupidest thing on, you know, on the planet. And what it does is, but it's how it's supposed to work is basically when you're driving uh, at low RPM, like, I don't know, 10, 20, 30% throttle, the green light is on and it's telling you that you're being economical. And when you floor it, the, the light next to it, which is this one, it goes red and the green one, you know, goes off and then it's red and it's telling you you're not being economical. This is supposed to be some extremely primitive fuel saving feature from the 80s and I think it's beyond useless and stupid because I can sense how hard and fast I'm driving just like any other human being on the planet. So uh, this is completely useless. I know cars in the US have a nice battery voltage meter here, which is a lot more useful. This is absolutely stupid. In my case, it doesn't work because there is a switch that I had somewhere in the doors. I put it somewhere, I lost it anyway. Anyways, it's a little vacuum switch that I think connects somewhere to the in stock intake manifold. That's all gone in my case, so it wouldn't work anyway. But it connects there and measures vacuum and when it picks up a lot of vacuum, I think it activates the red you know economy switch light which is bleh, horribly stupid so yeah that's this uh this everything else is just like on any other mark one mr2 on the planet uh these are my yeah air vents you know the, the, who cares about that this is my actually my dash cover people asked about this uh this is actually a gift from one of my first subscribers ever and my really good friend Jeff from the United States uh, when he was parting out his uh, MR2 he actually did without even telling me it was an awesome surprise he just packed this up and sent it to me because he saw in my videos that I didn't have a dash cover when this arrived in the email I was super super happy and and here officially thanks a lot Jeff you're the man I love you and this is actually from a company called Dash Designs over in the States. I'm gonna put up a link in the description. You can check them out. They make dash covers for almost any car and when it comes to old cars it's a good idea to have one of these a lot of sunlight especially if you keep the car outside you can actually crack up your entire dash and after that it's almost beyond being you know beyond salvageable so this is always a good precaution a $30 investment to save your interior from looking like a you know junkyard car I was too lazy to secure this thing properly so I put some cable ties in there and two more cable ties in there that hold this the dash cover and my uh, AEM widebands uh, sensor gauge this thing is awesome 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 I love it there's install videos there's everything I'll put that in the description too and but my cheap Chinese this gauge pod holder thing actually that doesn't work anymore because that was two dollars from eBay I love two dollar stuff from eBay and Amazon I'm a cheapskate and I buy cheap stuff sometimes it haunts me I will buy something better for this eventually I didn't want to drill into the into the stock plastics here so I just used cable ties I know disgusting but who cares even at this angle uh, the gauge is very visible AEM made an awesome gauge and you can see it perfectly so I might just end up being a lazy and keep it the way it is uh, this uh, somebody asked me about this once uh, on the videos they asked about this what this is this is a switch for the rear fog lights some of the cars in the states apparently don't have that and it works like this you have to activate your headlights and when you do that the switch actually works it lights up and it lights up the rear fog lights there you go those are the rear fog lights now having rear fog lights is absolutely mandatory on all cars uh, in Europe because many countries in Europe have some extreme fogs and you gotta have these to prevent you know being completely rear-ended by people during poor visibility this is my center console it's being held as these always you know get broken it's being held by screws like construction screws and giant washers the other one just fell out somewhere during hard driving probably 
center console a non-period correct Sony stereo but I love Sony stereos they're just good I always had them uh, in many of my cars in the past they remind me of being young and blasting music and I love having one in the MR2 I don't really care about being period correct there it's for this car is for my pleasure and not for a museum a very good stereo uh, so that's covered moving on my uh, shifting knob shifter knob this thing has a lot of history there's a separate video on it I'll just put it in the description all my pins my little lock pins they're not actual lock pins what do you call these like little bracket thingies for the shifter gator are all broken so uh, this thing is new to like this I've had it forever um, I like this but if I also wanted to have something here you know since forever that looks nice I'm thinking about making a custom bracket adapter plate for one of those rubber you know 80s style rubber shifter uh, boots or maybe even doing like a gated uh, gated shifter like in a Ferrari I would love to hear some comments from you guys on that what do you think I should do maybe even make a little product around that it would be fun I'm a, little, I'm a little bit afraid of the gated shifter thing because it might slow down uh, shifting and you know make it uh, a bit less comfortable and make me miss a shift you know during hard driving which is not what I want to do I do actually have the stock ashtray cover it's ha! Finally, I remember where something is. It's right here, and it goes there, but the little, the pins, as you can probably tell, it's all broken. There's nothing, so it just falls off, so I'm just keeping it here. I'll fix that one day, put it on the winter checklist for now. Uh, this is where I charge my GoPros. They usually go out quickly after a lot of driving during our road trip videos, so I just put this in, charge the GoPros during a non-entertaining driving sequence. Uh, my glove box compartment has some gloves, some cool driving gloves in here. These are actually one of the, you know, only high-end expensive things. These are actually real handmade leather, made locally. These are really, really, really good. And I've been actually thinking about making, you know, a little batch ordering a batch with a D4A logo stitched into them somewhere uh, making something cool because driving with these honestly it's pure pure joy I love them uh, what else in the driving compartment I have my $3.80 80s style sunglasses there you go I put these on sometimes when I want to pretend I time traveled from the 80s and there's a bunch of random crap in there uh, uh, my speaker cover something double-sided something random USB I got this with my when I put the brand new OEM 3 the timing belt I never stuck it on but I kept it uh, this is what I was talking about a gated shifter boot not uh, sorry rubber shifter boot you know like imagine it here look kind of cool right so let me know what you think about that this just like on any mr2 is super loose but who cares this is a driving machine and this is what my passenger side always looks like this is my has become in the last couple of days my hood prop element this is what holds my holds my engine bay lid in place i lost the original one during driving i was driving on the highway and i just saw it you know in the rear view mirror I couldn't stop it were high speeds and I just forgot about it and I didn't care I use this now but I will get a proper uh, engine support leg stand thing yeah this this uh, this is my choke you have seen this on one of the videos I still haven't done anything uh, to the choke to make a proper choke cable I just use this and when I start the car, when it warms up a bit, I just cut this off with some scissors. I use that during filming sometimes for better lighting. These are fuel receipts, more fuel receipts. As you can see, I'm a pretty messy person because when I get into this car, I want to use the little time I have to just drive it and enjoy it. And I don't care about anything else. It's all, all just going to be done during winter, as I said, when I won't be able to drive it. As Actually, I don't want to drive it because snow and salt destroys old cars. These are my floor mats. These are universal, generic rubber floor mats. Very ugly. 
I was actually thinking about making also a batch of you know cloth cool formats with the logos with proper measurements for the MR2 and maybe making a batch for all you guys out there and selling them at the awesome reasonable D4A prices let me know what you think about that as well so I think that's pretty much uh, for the interior this is what my passenger seat looks like always there's my phone there's stuff for cameras in the back there's always uh, more cameras see more cameras because when I when I'm in this car I often film so yeah more stuff from the interior my sunroof broken I did order another one that wasn't broken but it was broken during shipping and nobody is going to insure glass items so I can keep ordering millions more and breaking them and I stopped so yeah I will figure out something for this uh, I'm gonna ask Toyota you can still buy a brand new one from Toyota I'm gonna ask them to give me one for free and they won't do it of course um, so yeah maybe they will who knows maybe Toyota is cool Toyota is cool they might I'm gonna send them an email I have an ancient Toyota give me your sunroof that nobody's gonna buy anyway uh, rear center console thing this this I love this on two seaters one of my favorite things in this car just like an MX-5 or you know an S2000 all of these two-seater cars have this between the seats and it's just beautiful it's romantic it's love it did you know that this part here fits you know cassette tapes perfectly I think eight of them or something is the right size so you can you know listen to cassettes in the 80s yeah there's usually a carburetor balancer here it used to be here now there's nothing so yeah that works good condition uh, my door handles as you can see are you know faded ugly I have uh, used ones that aren't faded I ordered them when I first got the car because I thought that's what I should be fixing instead of everything else I was naive back then as you can see I never installed them I don't care these open the doors just fine so yeah I think you're getting I think you're getting I think you're getting you're getting the picture by now yeah I'm definitely not detailed focused this isn't a show car it's a fun car you know it's like that fun girl that doesn't spend 11 hours applying makeup and shooting selfies she actually she actually goes with you wherever you want to go and is fun as full and full of an adventurous spirit and that's what this car is it's that mischievous crazy girlfriend that keeps you smiling uh, what else now it's time for the frunk let's take a look at the frunk uh, unlike unlike my uh, engine bay oh it bear with me my frunk actually has this and I have to say that I'm kind of proud of my frunk it actually looks in pretty good condition I did clean this entire thing out I disassembled everything cleaned all of it out removed the rust that's there in the bottom underneath the steering wheel removed the rust repainted so this front is actually pretty nice and the one thing that I can't get working right is this see it, it it actually kind of pops off it's a bit loose but it's okay it doesn't leak there's never water coming out and the spring core the windscreen wash system works this is my spare wheel it's the original telephone dial mr2 thing with and now this is the glorious part an original wheel this is the continental sport contact 18565R14 and this thing is actually from when the car was bought new this uh, tire was never installed it's ancient as you can see here by the lettering and as you can see by the by the way the thread looks I don't know if you can see the sun is killing us or oh, it's come from this angle here there you go you can see that's the original continental tire from when this car was new so pretty cool definitely that's my frunk nothing much uh, else to see here uh, all the cars in Europe have this thing standard somebody might be wondering about that every MR2 I ever saw in Europe had this so yeah maybe some don't but all of them do you these are the ones that I know of maybe I never actually saw a mark 1a live could you imagine that uh, maybe they don't have that in Europe or you know anyways uh, 
I don't have the original jack. I have a replacement jack that I used from some Ford. It works, it works okay, it doesn't look nice, but who cares. Inside there is a brand new radiator that I replaced the leaky one, the old one with. So yeah, that's the frunk. I do have the hood emblem. That's the one thing I cared about. The previous owner removed it because he's a jackass. Uh, I did install one and I think this car should have that even if I'm not detail and ori uh, nox oriented an MR2 isn't an MR2 unless it has this awesome proud screaming chicken logo it's just super cool Car cars don't have that anymore uh, my front uh, indicator and position lights whatever you want to call them are also smoked but, uh, and we're gonna remove the tinting from these as well uh, during winter uh, here you can see, I don't know if you can see that, come on, please, sun, go away. Ah, there we go, you can see it. This is a non-stock mesh, it's a little mesh that I installed in there to protect the radiator from stones, because I drive a lot in the mountains, and sometimes there's a truck ahead, and before you overtake it, they can send stones flying into your radiator, like projectiles, and destroy them, so I installed this little safety net to protect my radiator. Uh, as you can see, uh, the MR2 has been going uh, very quickly, quickly, as it is full of bugs in the front, I still haven't washed it, but it is a true driver's, you know, pride and joy to have bugs in the front. The more bugs you have, the faster you are. I'm gonna show you the headlights as well. And they are also full of bugs during some of my highway runs. And yeah, the MR2 is fast. It's a real bug killer. Uh, original headlights done nothing to them uh, people say these suck at night in my opinion they're not that bad especially the high beams that's a train we're gonna shut up for a second are you finished mr train can you see it there it goes okay it's gone so the original headlights aren't that bad as people say uh, especially i like the high beams they work pretty well now let's move on to the trunk and the engine bay and then we're gonna go look underneath the car and that's gonna be pretty much it for this video okay now i gotta get my get my piece of wood i locked these doors that was stupid very stupid of me okay We've got the wood. I gotta put the camera down. This requires two hands. There we go. That is absolutely disgusting. And I gotta fix that. Uh, the engine bay, you've probably seen this. I'm not gonna talk about the engine. I'm gonna put a bunch of mods, uh, the list of mods in my video description if you did if you probably you know if you've been watching this channel you probably know about this stuff already it's a bicarb converted for a ge 16 valve and there's a million of videos of on how to do this and how to do it right and how to enjoy it and why it's good and why it's bad and i also did a video on whether it's good for, whether you should do it uh, you know blah, 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 blah. i talked about this you know i uh, talked about this a million times already so no not this time, I'm just gonna show you the engine bay. It's very pretty, I like it. One of the, probably the prettiest parts of the car. I did have some attention to detail here. And things that need to be done here are this. I'm not happy with this anymore. This needs an oil catch can. And when I drive really hard for extended periods of time, I do notice, there it is, a tiny, oh, and it's still hot a tiny pool of oil right there because oil comes out from this thing and goes down there coming out from the pc valve i i did buy a nice oil catch can and i'm gonna install it somewhere there there's a lot of space here i'm gonna install it there and that's what i'm gonna do to the engine bay other than that i'm happy with this place works nice looks nice you know performs right the engine is already getting uh, dirty pretty fast but i'm gonna clean it uh you guessed it, over winter. Uh, 
anything else in the engine bay that deserves some attention. Uh, yeah, you can see the adjustable Coney yellows from there. As you can also notice, my engine bay is black. I did that during my restoration. It's a sort of a rubbery black coating that protects you know from rust and you know whatever road debris it is actually peeling a bit right here because I lean on here often and I did peel it back but the primer underneath is underneath it is doing its job I'm just gonna repaint this again sometime uh, you know when I get the time but in everywhere else it's been holding on pretty pretty well uh, right there you can see stock exhaust manifold. I am thinking about a custom exhaust manifold for a, you know, a bit more horsepower, but this thing is okay for now. I'm thinking about wrapping it because it's emitting a lot of heat because it doesn't have the stock heat shields. They're rusted out. Uh, so yeah, but I will probably drive this thing until it cracks and then I'm gonna make a custom one. And that's it for the engine bay. If you got any questions, feel free, comment section. I'll be happy to oblige. Uh, another disgusting thing, uh, this, look at this. Uh, I don't wanna miss the disgusting things, I wanna show you reality. Uh, my battery hold down thing has been powder coated, you know, sandblasted, it's all almost brand new, very pretty, but all the batteries that are available aren't tall enough, so I cut up some old coolant hoses, you know, to get this thing to be stable, very ghetto, but it works. It worked for hundreds of kilometers, so I'm happy with it. Next up, the trunk. So the trunk, actually, my uh, trunk opening thing died for some reason. It worked fine, but it died. I'm gonna fix it. You guessed it again, over winter. And what I do is I get my key and then I open my trunk. And I do not have any of the original cloths in here. Also the original uh, plastic uh, hoses that would route cold air to the stock intake manifold are all gone. I did remove all, all the rust from the trunk and apply that more of that rubbery stuff to keep it from rusting. This is the basic safety stuff you gotta have in Europe a vest if you if your car breaks down or crashes something to tow somebody i'm never going to tow anything with this car they're crazy if they think i'm going to use this and there's first aid uh spare bulbs uh the triangle thing when you stop and this i kept this because it's awesome this is the original license plate from the previous owner that he used when the law allowed you to have smaller stock license plate. Just look at that, look at the size compared. And it was there and looked beautiful on the MR2. And this is just, I kept it to be sad. So when I find it and look at it, so that it makes me sad that I have to have the giant license plate. As you can tell, something interesting, the ECU, it's not there, it's gone because I'm carbureted. But I did manage to keep the with the ECU for the fan. I had to keep this so the fan comes on when it's hot enough. I managed to cut up all the wires correctly. This is what starts and stops my fuel pump. I'm a bit ashamed of this. As you can see, there's a lot more connections, but I'm just bridging it for now, which is not safe because when you remove the stock ECU, you need to figure out a way to start the oil pump when you turn the key. And this is how I do it right now. But uh, over the winter, I'm gonna install a relay here, which is a smart relay from a Peugeot or a BMW. And that relay is supposed to cut off the fuel pump when you stall the car. Right now, if I were to crash and stall the car, the fuel pump would keep running. And that, of course, is very unsafe and very bad, and I'm ashamed of this, And but I wanna show you. But I will install a relay here uh, very soon to have a proper safety feature, because when you do a bike carb conversion, this is something you gotta think about. The stock ECU, ECU is gone, and the stock system to kill the fuel pump when you stall the car is gone. Right now, this is my temporary solution. Uh, this is the ECU for the aerial thing, retractor, it says so. It's the retractor control for the antenna, whatever, I, I don't know if it's for the antenna or something. Uh, I just kept it there, but I think it's doing anything at the moment. Uh, over there, we have the plastic there. This, is, this comes directly from the side intake 
oh, I just smashed the camera. Side intake, there it is. Uh, of the MR2 and goes there and I'm thinking about another project for the winter to get more cold air to the carbs which are which they're not getting right now in the position they are to get a hose coming from here and route it all the way here through the trunk enter here where the stock one went and then from there onto the carbs just like the stock system and I'm gonna build a little plenum for the carbs and it should provide them with more cold air because as things are right now they're not getting enough cold air so that's my trunk uh, again very messy very ghetto I'm ashamed so yeah uh, there's some sensors here that I bought uh, there's some wires there's some fuses absolutely disgusting I think I'm gonna edit this out of the video there's even there's even a pigeon feather no 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 I'm not gonna edit anything else I decided I'll be honest and that's it I have no idea why I don't have uh, a iced tea bottle in here. Okay, there's some garbage cans right there. I'm gonna throw this away right now. Let's change the world. Make it a better place for you and for me and for the entire human race. There are people crying how disgusting your car is. You gotta throw out the trash from your car. You're disgusting imbecile. Okay, so we're at the garbage cans. Now we're gonna do a walk around of the garbage cans. We have some crows, we have some pigeons, they're eating bread. It's a contest and we throw away the bottle. And I missed. And yeah. I'm gonna commit suicide now. There was actually a person sitting there and I didn't notice them. Yep, okay. I'm moving back to the car. Okay. So I think that's everything when it comes to what we can see from here. If there's anything else you're still interested in, please ask me. Yeah, seats, seats, stock. I might like some period correct Recaros, but I also really, really like the stock seats. So I'm probably not gonna change them anytime soon. So let's close that. Let's remove the hood. The wood ornament, not the hood ornament, this is the wood ornament. Close that down. It needs a few tries. And now let's park the MR2 somewhere on some ramps so I can show you the underbody and the suspension and then we're gonna end it here. Okay, we got the MR2 on the ramps. So now I'm gonna go underneath and I'm gonna show you what's underneath it. We got some decent lighting and what's underneath I'm honestly pretty proud of how the car looks underneath unfortunately I already got it dirty when I had a puddle on the mountain but yeah so the engine you know about it uh, you know everything about it fully rebuilt by carb conversion uh, if you want to see the details uh, millions of videos in the description uh, all of the suspension components have been sandblasted and powder coated all of the bushings uh, have been replaced with protein red polyurethane bushings so far i have to say i was i'm happy with them the, the car is of course a bit harder on the road but not too much and they're a good compromise i was skeptical people you know there were some you know questionable re reviews actually mix, mixed reviews on these me personally really happy with these like them so far i'll do a more in-depth review later on the rear tie rods are a awesome piece of kit by Techno Toy Tuning. Techno Toy Tuning is an awesome company I really love uh, that still makes uh, parts for old Toyotas and some other really interesting old JDM cars uh, for which other companies don't really make many parts. Techno Toy Tuning makes a lot of really awesome stuff. And these brackets, all of this, all of this has been uh, powder coated. Uh, here you can see, you think it's an oil leak. Actually, it's not. It's that oil that's coming from the PCV. Uh, uh, in time, you know, during hundreds of miles, it comes here, you know, because there's no oil catch can. Disgusting. Uh, my engine mounts, everything, again, has been uh, powder coated, galvanized. This, I have filled this in with some uh, uh, polyurethane wind windshield adhesive. It works great so far and it's uh, what I think a, what I think it's a good compromise between the stock hovel stuff and the almost too hard polyurethane stuff this is good for the street really happy with this so far here you have my 
uh, fuel pump for the bike carbs. It's right there. With a little bracket I made, looks kind of ugly, but it works. The wiring for the uh, AEM wideband sensor. Here we have my transmission. Uh, all of it has been blasted, repainted, uh, fully rebuilt with new synchros, new fifth gear, uh, new everything, uh, seals, everything. Uh, so zero problems with fifth gear pop out. The, suspend, uh, the transmission is really beautiful now. Uh, we have some DIY adjustable. Um, uh, what do you call these sway bar links I made they're in there working cool so far the sway bar is completely stock and there's that oh uh, there's that you know the Volkswagen uh, muffler I mentioned uh, everything else here is stock I have actually completely lost my uh, my handbrake for some reason uh, I, this happened because I just installed the cables reinstalled them without any adjustment they were completely removed from my brake caliper rebuild. I reinstalled this thing and I used to have a very good handbrake on one wheel. Now I don't have anything on either of these wheels, which is a bit concerning and I will have to uh, adjust my parking brake so it actually works uh, properly. Uh, what else? The brakes have been fully rebuilt caliper with new calipers with new pistons. They are the stock calipers fully rebuilt. Uh, new also brake pads, of course, new uh, discs. And I have to say that I'm happy with this uh, setup. Actually, when I'm driving hard downhill, uh, they do start to smell kind of weird relatively quickly because they're just stock replacements, so they aren't perfect. I might look into some racing brake pads. Uh, soon uh, the braking power of this car although people suggest 80s cars are horrible of course they are noticeably at a disadvantage compared to some modern sports car sports cars but i have to say that i'm happy with the setup the braking power is good it's decent when you're used to it and when you know how to manage it it's actually okay and it's enjoyable to drive hard uh, it does start to fade relatively fast on a hard downhill drive so i think uh, motorsports, some racing uh, brake pads will be a good idea. Now, when it comes to the rest of the suspension, I have, as you may know, Coney yellow shock inserts. The strut bodies have been completely uh, blasted, uh, powder coated as well. And I have some Eibach Pro kit uh, springs. I have to say, the setup uh, so far, I am beyond happy with it. It's amazing, it's a true joy to drive really really enjoyable it's a right compromise between you know stiff and comfort and sportiness and uh, the car feels really really well balanced and driving hard to the corners has been a true joy and i'm simply in love in how the car this this car feels uh in the corners i cannot say that enough moving on to the rest of the underbody as you can see it looks very nice because i have cleaned this thing when i first bought the car i have completely cleaned this thing and then applied some heavy duty uh, underbody protection to save this thing from any future problems. Here are the front uh, sway bars. The one thing that kills old cars is rust and that's what I wanted to pr protect myself against. So, against. so this is why I have everything powder coated, uh, blasted, powder coated and the body protected. Here is the front, as you can see, everything still looks very pretty, very nice. Uh, I then applied over everything a big coat of some uh, wax to keep it you know from rust you know for the future as well that's my new radiator i even though it all though it all uh motors as all the housing for the fans has also been uh repainted so yeah everything has been done to keep this car on the road for as long as possible so i can enjoy it for as long as possible so we're back in the garage and it's time to end this, in my opinion, slightly boring video. Now I made this video because I actually wanted to make a bit of a statement. I wanted to show you a real car driven by a real person. I think that's something important that thanks to social media we are sometimes forgetting. There's millions of Instagram profiles, uh, millions of YouTube channels, of project cars, you know, sports cars, classic cars, whatever. And many of those channels focus on showing what's perfect about their car. And sometimes that paints a sort of an unreal picture. 
because people seeing this content, they only see what's good. They only see the part that is perfect, that is restored, that is shiny. And this paints an unrealistic picture that might actually discourage future project cars, project car owners, future car enthusiasts from going into the hobby because it all looks, oh my God, there was so much work here. This is all so perfect. I'm never gonna have enough money to do this, you know, and so on and so forth. The truth is actually not like that. All older cars, you know, classic cars, project cars, they have millions of these little things that I showed you today. They are, you know, not everything works. There's a lot of faults that were, imp they were simply, you know, impossible, too expensive, hard, or were just too lazy to fix it. Cars are like that. Cars are like people. Nothing is perfect. And even though there's millions of Instagram profiles of people out there shooting a million selfies that everything looks perfect, nobody is perfect. Nothing is perfect. And that's okay. That's good. Imperfect is beautiful. My car is messy. My car is dirty. My car is far from perfect. And you know why? Because I'm spending my time enjoying it. I'm spending my time driving it. I don't have time, you know, to detail it every other day. But it's okay, I appreciate all hobbies. If detailing makes somebody happy, that's cool. You should detail your car as much as you want. I'm not telling anybody what to do. But cars are made to be driven. And sometimes between all those car meets and detailing sessions and whatever, you should also drive it. Get out there and floor it because a car like a person should enjoy its life, should live its life fully. My car is continuing its life. It's a 32 year old car, but it's continuing its life in the full sense of a car's life. And it's being driven, it's out there, people see it. It's spreading car enthusiasm, whatever that is. And yeah, I think all cars should be driven. That's basically my point, I hope I didn't say anything to confuse or insult anybody, but I know you get what I'm trying to say. So that's it for this super boring walk around video. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask, comments, whatever. If you like this, like it. Uh, I appreciate all of you for being there throughout all of this thing that we're doing with this car and you know DIY car stuff and car enthusiasm and project carness in general. Thank you. Everybody, thanks for watching, and as always, I'll be seeing you very soon with more awesome stuff on the D4A channel.